Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, many of you were actually telling me to upload video regarding multi Okay, We'll try to understand what exactly this is. You know, when do we face this particular problem and how do we resolve this particular problem also. Remember, if you want to understand this particular topic, the first thing that you should know is something about correlation. Okay, so if you have not seen my video regarding correlation, I've uploaded all the two different kind of correlation. I've also uploaded about covariance, Pearson correlation, Spearman grand correlation. Okay, so please go and watch that particular video. If you don't know about correlation, you'll not be able to understand about multicollinearity. Now, suppose if I have a problem statement, I have a data set. My first feature is basically uh, age. Okay, the second feature is basically experience, and my output feature is salary. Now, suppose this is a regression problem statement. I need to solve this particular problem. So uh, if I want to convert this into an equation, I can basically write it as y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into x1 plus beta 2 into x2. Now, this x1 is nothing but age. x2 is nothing but experience. And my y, which is my predicted, will basically be showing me the best fit line. And remember, my salary is basically my output feature. Now, this beta 0 is my intercept. Okay intercept my beta 1 and beta 2 are coefficients okay coefficients or slopes i hope everybody knows about this these are basic things in linear regression now now suppose uh, well I, i'll take all this particular feature i'll try to solve with the help of seeing uh, multiple linear regression and i'll be able to get my best fit line that is pretty much simple now what if uh, what if guys if i if i see okay if i go and check this two independent feature x1 and x2 that is my age and experience and i find out the correlation is more than 90%. Okay, so that basically means what will happen is that this age and experience they are internally correlated with each other, and the correlation is more than 90%. Suppose it is greater than 90%. That basically means that if I'm actually computing the y output, my x1 feature and x2 feature are almost same because the correlation is not more than 90%. So that basically means we are just providing the more same information to this output feature that we basically want to compute right through the best fit line now how do we actually find out whether the correlation is high or not how to actually resolve this we'll try to understand in this particular video okay and this is what multicollinearity basically means multicollinearity basically says that if your independent feature are internally correlated more than 90 percent then how do you actually first of all find out Whenever you are applying in your linear regression that there is some correlation, sorry, there is some multicollinearity within your independent feature. And the second thing is that how to actually resolve these particular issues that also we'll try to discuss. So let us go ahead and try to uh, understand these things. And here I have actually taken a very, very simple example. Okay. So uh, what I've done is that I imported pandas and then I have uh, advertising.csv. Uh, this is my CSV file. Now we'll discuss about this CSV file and we'll try to understand what exactly it is. So I'm just going to execute the code. The second line I'm just going to execute. And remember, in my advertisement.csv, I have two independent features, TV, radio, sorry, three independent features, TV, radio, newspaper. And my output feature is basically sales. Now I'll just discuss about this particular feature. Now this is basically the expenditure uh, in various departments. Uh, like in the TV, a company has done this much expenditure in the first month. In radio, it has done this much expenditure. In newspaper, it has done this much expenditure. And this actually led to the sales of this much amount. Okay. Like this, all the, all the other information are there. Monthly information are actually present over here. Now, remember, these are my independent features. Now, based on these three features, I need to predict what will be the sales value. Now, this is the problem statement that, that I actually have. Now, first of all, remember, in order to solve this particular problem, and uh, this I'm actually going to do with the help of uh, uh, ordinary least square, which is a technique which is used in linear regression, multiple linear regression. Now, remember, now in this particular case, I have three features, right? Uh, TV is one feature, radio is one feature, newspaper is one feature. Now, if I want to create this equation, it will become like this, beta 0, beta 1 multiplied by TV, okay, TV feature, then beta 2, multiplied by radio feature okay and then beta 3 uh, multiplied by newspaper feature right so this is my complete equation for the um, uh, multilinear regression beta 0 is basically my intercept now by default you can see that uh, and remember whenever we are actually creating ordinary least square this beta 0 right beta 0 also we need to compute 
we don't have any variable over here so this will get multiplied by one so i have all my features i have tv radio newspaper but i don't have beta zero value so beta zero value i'll try to add a column which will be my beta zero or it will be one column over here and this all will be having one value okay we, we should start with like this with the help if you are trying to find out the multilinear regression with the help of ols that is ordinary least square so that is what we have actually done in this particular code okay so here you can see that in the x there uh, i have imported a library which is called as statmodels.api okay through this i am actually adding a constant of x now this constant will basically be one okay so if you, if you see that if i execute this separately i'm just going to execute this separately so that you'll be able to understand and if i execute it over here okay and let me just create one more uh, let me print this x okay then you'll be able to understand so when i print this x you can see that my first value will now have constant which is having this one value okay so this is what we have actually done in order to actually use if you want to use it in the ordinary least square method now ordinary least square method if you want to call i'll just write sm sm dot ols okay so here you can see that i have written sm dot ols i've given y and x okay and remember if i just go and press shift tab over here i have to give an endog value and exog value endog value is basically my output feature exog value is basically my input feature so i have given that okay and i have done fit okay now when i do fit and after this when i actually calculate the summary okay now this is the most important graph which will help us to understand whether there is some multicollinearity between this features okay between this feature that basically means whether tf and radio has a higher correlation or radio newspaper has a higher correlation that we will be able to see from this particular summary now first thing is that after using the summary model dot summary we have actually fit with the ordinary d square this constant that you have this is basically your beta zero okay this is the beta zero this is beta one this is beta two and this is beta three now this basically indicates that if there is a unit increase in the sales value that basically means that we need to increase the expenditure of tv by this many units okay so similarly with respect to radio in the newspaper you can see a negative value so negative value basically means that we do not have to do that much expenditure okay now this is fine this is the coefficient right now the next thing is that we'll go and observe the r squared value the r squared value and the adjusted r squared value will be ranging between 0 to 1 and remember this value is pretty much good because the more it is towards the one that basically means it has fitted the model in a very good way now this is my residuals okay now with respect to that error we'll try to find out with the help of standard deviation so this is the standard error you can basically say and here also you can see that the value is very very less now this indicates that none of these features that we have over here is actually having that multicollinearity multi problem why i'm saying that because you can also see the p value over here all the p value is less than 0 0.05 only one feature that is this this feature that is newspaper is actually having the p value called as 0 0.860 right because this coefficient basically shows that we are making an unnecessary expenditure on newspaper right so we can reduce that particular expenditure also this is what it indicates so over here the p value is basically showing it as 0 0.860 but the main question is that whether there is a multicollinearity issue with respect to the independent features first of all you went and uh, checked the coefficient the coefficient over here looks uh, you know over here it looks a very small number apart from that then you go and check the r squared error the r squared error is pretty much good because it is much more nearer to one after this the main thing is about the standard error now this standard error will be a small numbers if there is no interrelationship between this independent feature that basically means whether there is no multicollinearity uh, relationship between this particular independent features okay so this value will be actually high but if there is a some relation if there is some relation within this independent feature usually this standard error actually becomes a bigger number but still i have not shown you an, this particular example so far in the upcoming in, in in as we go down now here i'll be actually showing you that particular example okay now this is one way that you can verify now what i'll do is that i'll take all these independent features that is my x value and then i will try to plot this in the terms of correlation okay so i have imported matplotlib uh, matplotlib.py plot as plt and i am actually trying to plot this correlation now when i plot this correlation here also you can see that guys 
TV, radio, radio TV, okay, newspaper, these all have very, very less correlation, which is pretty much nearer to zero. Or you can also say less than 0.5, right? So here also you can see that it is pretty much nearer to zero. Here also you can see that it is pretty much nearer to zero. Here also you can see that it is pretty much nearer to zero. That is less than 0.5. And this is also less than 0.5. So this is almost the same thing. See, newspaper and radio, or newspaper and radio. These are the same values that is represented. You can just see this part of this, right? So here you can see that there is no much correlation between the independent features. So definitely you can see that there is no uh, there, there is no multicollinearity issue within your independent feature, right? So uh, here you are pretty much safe. Okay, then you can directly use this particular model in order to solve your problem, right? Now the next thing is that I'll try to show you one more example where it is actually having a high relationship, high correlation within the independent feature. So this particular feature, this particular data set I have. And again, guys, all this data set will be given to you. Now, I'm reading the salary data.csv. Okay. Then I'm doing df underscore salary dot head. Here is my years of experience. Here is my age and here is my salary. Now, these are my independent features, guys. Years, experience and age. I have to actually predict the salary. So what I do is that my X feature, I'm going to take this. Okay. That is my years of experience and age. And my Y is basically my salary. Now, after I do this, again, I'm going to add that constant like how I have added in my previous problem statement. And then I'm again going to use the ordinary least square. I'm giving the endog value as y and exog value as x. And I'm doing dot set. Now, once I do it, now let us go and see the model summary. Now, in this model summary, usually my coefficient is very, very high. This basically indicates that if I'm increasing my years of experience by one unit, this much value in my output feature will actually change. If I'm increasing uh, the age by one unit that is one year this much salary should I, I should basically increase now this particular coefficient is absolutely fine now the next thing is that we'll go and see the r square it is coming somewhere around 0 0.9 c0 this is also fine because it has fitted the model properly and the value should be between 0 to 1 this is fine but the next thing that we should focus on is this standard error now you can see that the standard error is becoming a huge value okay this is becoming a huge value so whenever you have two independent features okay this is my x1 and x2 and this if there is some multicollinearity issue this standard error will basically become a huge number now suppose if you add one more independent feature which is actually correlated with all this particular feature right at that time the standard error will be a very very high value okay now but still we cannot just say by this right we also have to check the p value here you can see that one of the one of the feature basically saying it as years experience this p value is less than 0 0.05 right this is 0 0.05 but in the case of age it is showing as 0 0.165 0 0.165 right and usually if we are considering 95 percent of variance that is getting covered that is uh, that basically means that p value should be less than 0 0.05 right but here we have p value greater than 0 0.05 right that basically means that age and years of experience there may be some kind of correlation this is giving you an indication of some kind of correlation now in order to confirm that what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to plot this correlation now when i'm plotting this correlation you can see that guys years of experience and age is having 98 percent correlation okay 98 percent correlation this is pretty much important right this is pretty much important now if there is such kind of correlation don't you think that one of this feature will be more than sufficient in order to predict your salary now what is that particular feature you should think of dropping off now we'll come to the remedies how to actually fix this particular problem okay so multicollinearity issue if there is one thing is that don't do anything this is one of the solutions you don't care about multicollinearity you're just taking all the input features you are trying to create a model now the second option basically is that you go and check this p value now in this particular thing the p value basically says that over here is 0.165 now this is having a higher p value than the years of experience all you can do is that just drop this age feature okay just drop this age feature because you can see over here your correlation is more than 90 percent it's somewhere around 98 percent so in short you can see that if you are just taking years of experience right this is actually covering more than 98 percent of the properties of this particular age so now i can drop this age feature and i can train my whole model with the help of only one feature that is years of experience 
Now, this is one of the way how you can basically solve it. Now, this was all about multicollinearity. Please make sure that you understand. So, I've given both the example. One where we could not see any issues regarding multicollinearity. Now, over here also, guys, you can see that in the first problem, my p value is not less than 0 0.05. I can also drop this particular feature because, see, understand there is some negative coefficient value. This basically indicates that if my sale value increases by one unit, okay that basically means sorry if if i if i decrease the expenditure of newspaper by this much value that basically means it will increase the expenditure it will increase the sales value by one unit that is what it is basically saying right so we can also drop this particular feature because this is just an unnecessary expenditure okay but remaining for all the other features you can see that the p value is less than 0.05 so I hope you understood this, guys. Please do let me know like, whether you have any questions. All this particular uh, notebook will be uploaded in the GitHub link. So you can actually watch it over there. And yes, please do subscribe to the channel. See you all in the next video.